the first time of actually going to America was for the Olympics. Um, we became favourites to win about six, seven weeks beforehand. And uh, so of uh, being selected to go to your first Olympics, favourites to win, and then going to, to Los Angeles and Hollywood and the razzmatazz of the whole games uh, was, was very special indeed. Rowing's pretty lucky is that it's in the first week of, of the games. So you can be really single-minded and sort of hide yourself away in your own little bubble. And then once the, the rowing's all finished, we've got the, the joy of going around and watching the other sports compete, as well as letting your hair down and having a little bit of fun. That doesn't actually happen in the village itself. Unwritten rules about uh, uh, of code of conduct within, within the games. But uh, the swimmers tend to finish before most other sports because of individual discipline is over in one day or heats on one day final the next day depending on the, the system they work on and then they find all the, the, the good places to go and party and so when the rowing finishes we go and find the swimmers because they've always found the good parties by them. I've been helping this government and the previous government with their human legacy side of the games. One of the reasons that I wanted to get involved with the bid process in the, pro in the first place because it's not just about uh, bringing the games to the country and, and having the 26 different sports of the, the, the top athletes in all those different disciplines coming to our shores. It's really about what you can embrace for young people and moving the next generation on. The strongest element that we've brought in is what we call sports makers. And uh, that's looking for 40,000 young people that will help other people do sports. That may be in the office, at work, maybe with schools, of somebody taking them upon themselves to organize some fun sporting events. And uh, once you start then getting people involved in that sort of process, especially if you're a volunteer coach, is that uh, a coach can touch 10, 20, 100 people's lives, maybe over a, a coaching career, thousands of people's lives. And then you're really talking of a huge uh, human legacy program left over for 2012. Well, in Munich, I was, I was 10. And it was really my first experience of Olympic Games, even though that uh, I wasn't there. I was watching it on TV and, and uh, reading it about in the papers. Well, Mark was getting those outstanding performances, uh, winning a gold medal, and then coming back the next day and winning another one, making the total of seven. So it sort of made it bigger and bigger and bigger as, as the, the, uh, the event went on. What a lot of people don't realise, there's actually world records broken in every gold medal that he won in as well. So uh, it's not just about winning the gold medals, but uh, being the best performance at that time um, was just incredible. I've met Mark uh, a number of times, uh, a great guy very enthusiastic with the Loris um, Sport for Good and, and uh, the Loris Sports Awards. A great individual. Sometimes they say it's not best to, to meet your, your, uh, uh, your heroes. And in, in his case, that uh, um, he, he fulfilled it and more. So I'm not quite sure what my long-term challenges and goals will be. I'm more determined to be involved in the organisation of, of, of Loris, helping Sport for Good. Up until now, it's been pretty difficult because of 2012 on, on our doorstep, um, which I've heavily been involved in. Um, so I'm looking forward to helping other people achieve their dreams.